glass hub, which is at your feet. Hello, Jim Matthews, glasshubba.com. I stood behind this lady in a coffee line at a craft fair and all of a sudden knew what my next project would be because I want to show you another way to display garden art. You can fuse half inch copper pipe right into a project by flattening one end with a hammer and slipping it between the glass layers before firing. Here's the partially flattened pipe positioned on the base glass layer. Then the remainder of the design is assembled on top. After firing, this is the back side, you shove a length of half-inch hardware store rebar into the pungent loam of your landscape and the open end of the copper pipe will slide right onto it. Pungent loam. No screws, no glues, no post-attachment blues. Now here's how the ladybug lies. Four identical leg pieces, two identical pincer pieces, and a head laid out like this on the kiln shelf. Then a single piece body layer lays atop those to hold everything together. Here it's shown in white for illustration purposes. On top of that we add the neck armor shown here in gray and two shell halves. But wait! Before the shell halves comes our partially flattened length of copper pipe. This part is round, this part is flat. Now there we have our giant Ladybug Garden Art. Uh-oh. My little ant is a classic three-segment bug design. It's been around for at least 20 years. Head, thorax, and abdomen joined by copper wire and six wire legs. I used clear glass for the base pieces, but had to make a dreaded template for the opaques. You, on the other hand, have the benefit of my hindsight and can just use the clear pieces you just cut as your template. Clear on bottom, red atop those. The yellow design pieces are just smaller versions of the same shapes. Now this is off-the-shelf machine-made stringer. Never has been highly useful in my studio, but lots of fusers love it. I used a few drops of hairspray as adhesive to keep things in place and then nipped up little sections of the stringer to stripe the yellow with. I was going to use these big black frit balls for the eyes but they just weren't expressive enough for this bug. So instead, I nipped up some tiny little white circles and some tiny little black circles from thin glass, put them in place, and then added little red frit balls. Then everything gets moved to a kiln shelf for the delicate copper wire steps. Now this is 12 gauge copper wire. I think it's a little heavy for this guy and would have preferred 16 gauge but I didn't have any. I need two lengths long enough to comfortably reach between the segments after the ends are bent into hooks. Here I got the bright idea to hammer the ends of my connectors flat so the glass pieces would lay on them more stable. See there? It worked out okay, but I wouldn't bother in the future and don't recommend you do. The legs will be bent into shape after firing. For now, they'll just be three lengths of wire evenly spaced through the midsection. And yes, I hammered them flat. It may have helped some, but better to just use smaller wire. I resorted to a little aloe gel to help things hold still. Speaking of smaller wire, see that skinny piece close to her head? 
That's 18 gauge wire. It's too light for the legs on this ant, but just right for the antenna. It'll fit between the head layers. Okay, let's see how she fared in the heat. There's our barbecued ant, and there is her little antenna right where I left it. What do you think happened here? It looked like this going in. I think it floated on a puddle of wet hairspray when the kiln vibrated. That's my best guess anyway. See the black flakes? This is some kind of coating that the wire sheds in the heat. I just brush it clean with a soft bristle brush. The copper wire is very soft and pliable. It's easy to bend and shape. Here's how mine came out. I bet you can do better. My simple dragonfly has only four pieces of glass, plus the eyes. See, the wings are only two pieces. They go on the bottom and stretch all the way across, like this. The head and thorax are one piece, the long abdomen another, and the dichroic body parts are capped in clear. Well, you'll see. Here are the little template pieces I made. Thin clear to cap the dichro. I'm tracing the cut piece here instead of using the template. Instead of clear, I decided to cap the thorax section of the head piece with thin lime. This piece is so tiny I used nippers to shape it. The dragonfly's long abdomen section is segmented, so what I'm going to do is slice up the clear cap into sections. Then replace each segment in sequence about two or three millimeters apart which will eliminate one of the segments. I glued those little suckers down and here's the body reassembled. No need to make templates for the wings. I'm using thin clear glass here. This stuff is such a pleasure to cut. Your pattern will have the wing filament design printed on it. I've drawn mine here so I can trace it using glass line pen. I'm using a pale blue color called mist. White or gray would work nicely. Black in a pinch. When I'm done with the color I've made it a habit of capping the bottle and squeezing some water through the tip. Then I store the tip with the little wire plug that comes with it inside. When the glass line is dry, I carefully clean up the lines just a little with something sharp. And then I can assemble everything on papyrus paper on a kiln shelf. But wait! These delicate little fairy wings would look really nice with some texture. You can add bottom texture to any glass by sprinkling shelf primer onto your firing surface. I've marked the position of my wings and I'll sprinkle on some everyday kiln wash with my freakishly malformed Fritz spoon. Now one last little twist. 
the body sections lay on top of the wings and protrude. If they're left unsupported, they'll slump down and our fairy fly will look like a cartoon character hit with a 2x4. So I'm using scraps of fiber paper underneath them for support. And oh yeah, a couple of bulbous eyeballs. Then into the roasting chamber. I fired this to 1425 Fahrenheit, shooting for what I call a sculpted contour, where individual pieces are delineated and neatly rounded and smooth. The shelf primer will easily brush off, wear your dust mask, Can you see the texture it left? Yeah. It's diaphanous. Oh. I'm going to add a magnet and give this one a home on the range. I mean the fridge. There he is. And there's his little girlfriend. And there is a future Glasshopper project, an all-time favorite, the Airsick Balloonist.